All right, so one of the top challenges kids face during the school year involves their peers, according to a recent Harris Poll survey. But whether it's dealing with a bully or making new friends, experts say a sense of belonging is really key for kids to feel successful and happy. Well, socializing can be even more challenging for children who have a disability. Pew Research Center says there are more than 7 million public school students across the U.S. with a disability. So it is really important to teach kids how to be inclusive and respectful. Author, speaker, and podcast host Amy Julia Becker and psychotherapist, friend of the show, Nero Feliciano, join us now. Ladies, it is great to have you both here. Amy Julia, let me start with you. You have three children, one of whom has Down syndrome. Talk to us about some of the, the stressors that your family faces mm -hmm. um, in just making sure that people are inclusive, they are respectful. So our oldest daughter, Penny, who is 17, has Down syndrome, and then I have a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old. And over the course of the almost two decades of having Penny in our life, friendships and inclusivity have been different at different stages. But across the board, I would say disability is kind of like a magnifying glass for the stressors that any kid might face. Mm -hmm. So they're not completely different, they just sometimes are bigger. So take, for example, going into a new situation, with new sensory experiences, new sounds, new sights, that might be really overwhelming, especially for a younger child. Yeah. But it's something that a parent can anticipate, whether you are the parent who has a child with a disability or the parent who is encouraging your child to invite a kid with a disability over. There are things we can do ahead of time to actually uh, mitigate those stressors along the way. And picking up right there, things that we can do. Nero, how do you suggest that we teach kids about disabilities and teach them to be inclusive? Yeah, I and mean, there's so many things we can do. One, empathy is big. I, I talked to my four kids about what would it be like for you to be born in a place where you walk into a room and people automatically know difference. They understand that on some level racially, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. not in terms of the same judgment and curiosity that kids might have. I think as parents, we can reach out to parents mm -hmm. who have kids with disabilities, organize play dates, ask how can we make this easier. Mm -hmm. We'd like to form relationships so we can humanize the commonalities between the kids with disabilities and the kids who don't have them. And that's so important to teach that empathy. Amy, Julia, you mentioned you have two other children. Mm -hmm. They're younger than your oldest child that has the disability. When they were growing up, what were the conversations your family had so that you could help arm your younger children to have these conversations with of kids outside of your family? It took a while for me to f answer that question within our own family, but over time I realized that I wanted to normalize disability rather than seeing this as an aberrant right. human experience to say, yes, lots of people experience disability, and that's true in our family too, and to neutralize the language around disability so that we weren't having a posture of pity, but actually one of mutuality so that with all of our kids, we talk about the challenges they face mm -hmm. and the gifts they can offer. And so those are different between our different kids. So we're not trying to say there are no differences or disability isn't real, right. but we are trying to say that we can appreciate each other and build relationships of mutuality. So normalize, neutralize, and really think about uh, the language of challenges and gifts rather than talking about weaknesses or problems. Yeah, because we all have challenges and gifts. Yeah. Okay, I like that. And not just that. I mean, every single person here is a mom. And, and I think about what sort of stops you in my track. My biggest fear is my child not being accepted, mm. right? Not being able to make friends or being accepted fully as she is. Yeah. Nora, I want you to chime in here, but Amy, Julia, as a parent who shares that same heart-stopping, dropping concern, what's the one thing you wish other parents mm. would do? I think for other parents, it's actually, um, you mentioned curiosity yeah. earlier, mm -hmm. and so to not be afraid to ask the question that might allow for a relationship to happen. Mm -hmm. Because I think sometimes we're so afraid we're gonna say the wrong thing or be offensive or step on someone's toes that it actually creates distance, mm -hmm. rather than saying, you know what, I'm gonna trust that if I take one step towards you, Honestly, the parent of the child with a disability will probably take 10 steps in oh, return because there's such a desire, exactly as you said, for those connections to be made. In a row, about 20 seconds to you. Yeah, and encourage curiosity. Recognize, ask them, yes, what is it like for you to be in a wheelchair? But also, what's your favorite show? What's yes. your favorite band that you're listening to now? Build those bridges and show the commonalities and how they connect just as kids outside of differences. Thank you, author, speaker, and podcast host, Amy Julia Becker, and psychotherapist, Nero Feliciano. We appreciate you both joining us on such an important topic. Thank you. And you're watching NBC News Daily.